Hey guys, welcome to my place, man. This is my upstairs theater room where I spend a lot of my time these days. Uh, you've always been at my studio, but now welcoming you into my house because I wanna share my experience over the last year with the BenQ GP500 tabletop projector, which I have been using as my main home theater projector all of the year of 2023. So what you're seeing back there right now is not a projector screen. That is actually my TV. That's a 65 inch Sony Bravia TV. I love it. We love it. When we come upstairs, you know, it's always nice to just, you know, have a TV playing with, you know, some, some videos or, you know, some, some old shows or something like that. But we've watched some really great movies, man. We just recently watched, um, what was that? The Chris Helmsworth movie. I keep forgetting the Extraction. Extraction 1 and Extraction 2. And then recently, Amazon dropped Reacher. So when it's time for a big show, like a big action thing, you got to go big, man. So we just turn this TV off, right? And then what we do is we turn on the GP500, which is overhead right there, and we drop down the massive 120-inch screen, which I'll talk about in a little bit because it is the reason why I'm able to shoot this video with all these lights on right now. This screen is an ambient ceiling light rejecting screen from Elite Screens and they're today's video sponsor. So I'll give you some technical details about that screen and you know how it uh, bounces off the, um, the ambient light in a little bit. But this video is about the, uh, the, the GP500 from BenQ. Absolutely great projector in a very, very well-fitting price. You get a lot of value in this projector for the price that they're selling it at. I think if you're spending, let's say less than 2K, let's say about $1,500 on a projector, uh, you, you know, you're only gonna get so much, right? But BenQ manages to give you a lot of what you would want in a projector that you can actually use in your home uh, full time. So before we get into that, I see back there, I can see back there that I don't have anything good planned. This is the Android uh, TV screen that you're looking at right here because it comes built into the uh, the dongle that you put into the back of it. Uh, it does not have Google TV. I wish like we could get an update to Google TV because I've always preferred Google TV over Android. I, I just feel like it runs a little smoother. The downside to this dongle is that it doesn't come with Netflix built in. So you have to kind of sideload it and it's not the best experience as far as Netflix, go, Netflix goes. Every other app works just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle over here to, uh, let's go to YouTube. Let's put some, y'all wanna see some flowers? Let's put some flowers on the screen, man. Let's see if we can uh, get some flowers going. Yeah, I was watching this earlier on the Sony TV. So let's just have that in the background as we discuss how awesome the GP500 is. Look, man, great projector. So I have mine hooked up to a sound bar, right? With my whole surround sound system. And it sounds fantastic, but it does come with its own 360 degree Travogo sound system built in. So if you're using this as sort of a tabletop projector or like a grab and go kind of thing. Now remember, it doesn't have battery, so you do have to keep it plugged in. But if you're using it as a tabletop projector, you can set it on like a, a tabletop in front of you or even um, a, an end table on the side of you and you can actually hear the sound. They have a setting where you can actually project a sound. You can basically tell the projector what side of the room it's on and it throws the sound and it does a really great job of kind of balancing things out even though it's on the right or the left side of the room. So the speaker system is pretty clutch to be honest with you, it's, you know, for a portable tabletop projector. I decided to make it my main projector because the picture quality is so good. We're getting 4K here, all right? You usually don't find 4K in less than $1,000 when you're uh, purchasing a projector and BenQ's GP500 is no exception to the rule. So we're getting 4K and it looks fantastic. You can't really see it back there right now, but we're gonna definitely run some B-roll so you can see how good this thing looks. So what I really like about it is like the Cinemaster stuff and how you can go in and fully customize your picture. They don't just give you like red, green, and blue, and you know, the contrast and stuff. They give you deep, deep, deep customization into your picture quality, whether it's motion smoothness or the, uh, the colors and stuff like that. The cinema, what is it? It's, it's a cinema mode. Let's, you know what? Let's just go into some settings, man. I wanna show you some stuff. Where's my remote? I got all these remotes here. So let's go over here. I wanna show you can you see me right here? All right, you can see me. So we're gonna look at this. I wanna show you some of these settings. Let's go into projector menu and show you some of the stuff I've been messing around with. So we'll go into picture mode and I have it set at cinema, but I've also done some extra stuff because it does have advanced color settings. Do you go in advanced color se uh, settings? You got your uh, gamma selection. It's on BenQ, but I thought I had it at two point 
Yeah, okay, I did turn it up a little bit for this video. So I, had, I usually keep it at about 2.2, 2.4. Let's turn it back up to BenQ so it brightens the picture a little bit. But then you got your color temperature tuning, and then you got your Cinemaster, you got all of your stuff, man. And a lot of you'll be excited to know that it does support your HDR content. So you're getting full customization over all of your content, whether it be the picture or video quality, motion smoothness, and audio, and installation. This is actually the top two projector as far as ease of installation, no matter what you're doing with it, whether it's ceiling mounted or tabletop mounted or anything like that. Um, I want to go into some installation stuff because I am watching it on a 120 inch screen that drops down. So a lot of times with uh, projector screens, which you know what, it's about that time I talk about this screen, man. So before we actually dig into installation, I got to talk about this screen because that's the second most, if not sometimes the most important part of your home theater setup is actually the screen because, you know, I'm pretty sure somebody, somebody out there has tried to get a nice projector or a projector and project it on a wall or a sheet or a garage or something like that. And the picture quality is just, come on, man. You know what that picture quality looks like. So the selection of the screen is very key to having a great home theater setup. And right now you're looking at the Elite Screen Starling Tab Tension uh, Centigrade 5D back there. Let's go check it out. So the Centigrade 5D 1.5 gain ceiling ambient light rejector material is for standard long throw projectors only. This means you cannot use the screen with an ultra short throw projector because it's made to reject light from certain angles and USTs just cast their light from too steep of an angle. The screen material has a few layers, one being an angular reflective technology that reflects off axis light from all directions, which helps eliminate up to 75% of the ambient light in the room. The high contrast layer is there to improve the black levels for rich images while maintaining the color purity, which also reminds me that the screen is ISF certified for accurate color reproduction in darkroom environments. Now it is a tab tension screen, which means you're gonna have these little tabs with the little cable running through it, and that's gonna pull the screen tight so you have a nice flat surface so you can have the best image quality possible. Now here's a couple of perks. It comes with three different types of remotes. You get an IR, an RF, and a wall box controller. I like to use the RF remote all the time just so I can have full contact with the screen with no interruptions from anything else. But there's something else that's really cool about installation here. Yes, it is a motorized screen and that means it drops down. It has a memory that you can actually program. So you can see here that it drops down just below the top surface of my TV stand here, which is exactly where I want it to cast my image, okay? because it will drop down like at full length, it will drop down probably another six to eight inches lower, and that's too low for me to be watching the projector here. So what I've done is actually program it to stop here every time, and that way I get the perfect setup every time I hit the button. Another thing about installation is that it's super easy. You will need some help installing it because it does have some weight to it because it's a motorized electronic screen and it's really high quality. But they do give you these two wall mount brackets, okay? So you can mount them on the studs on your wall. You can have it wall mounted. Or in my case, I have a vaulted ceiling so my walls are not as tall. So I have it suspension mounted from my ceiling and it comes with that hardware as well. So you can mount this thing two different ways. And I really like the fact that it's versatile in mounting because otherwise I wouldn't be able to use it in here. And I'd be missing out on all this 120 inch ambient light rejecting goodness. So even though the GP500 is putting out 1500 lumens and it gives a nice bright picture, it's always nice to be able to keep the ambient lights on or have lights coming from my shutters and the stairwell in the daytime so we can still enjoy our content and not be locked down to watching our content in pure dark. All right, now let's step into something I've been doing this year for the first time in over 20 years, which is gaming. I just hit the magic button on the PS5 remote, and now I'm gonna hit the HDMI, let me switch it to HDMI 1, because it has two HDMI ports. One uh, actually supports ER. So we're going into gaming. Let's see, let me, let me get up in here, man. Let me go into Spider-Man 2. Let's check this out, because I was playing Spider-Man 2. I started out playing God of War, because when I got my PS5 this year, dude, I've been away from gaming for like 23 years, maybe, yeah, 23 years. And my first experience in real console gaming since then has been the PS5. And it started on the GP500 with a 120 inch screen. It wasn't this screen, but it was a 120 inch screen. And it was phenomenal to have like that much gaming action. Now I'll be honest with you, I'm not a pro gamer or anything like that. So when it comes to first person shooters and Call of Duty and stuff like that, I absolutely suck. But what I do like to do is play Ghost Recon. And I bring that up because of latency. 
This isn't a gaming projector and it does not support a low latency mode that I could find on here. But as far as casual gaming goes, I don't really see any real latency or lag or, you know, just delay and responses with my button presses and stuff like that. So it's been really great. Let's see if I can play this backwards. It's been really great <laughs> for uh, casual gaming. Let me see, man. This is, oh man, Spider-Man 2 is so cool. I love playing this game. I actually finished it, but now I'm just going through finishing some missions and stuff. But gaming on this projector has been absolutely great and for it to be my first real experience gaming in 23 years it was just mind-blowing like having the characters blown up so massively on this big old screen here so for gaming yeah you could definitely do it if you're gonna be like competition gaming and stuff like that i don't know because it doesn't support a low latency mode but it does have a game uh picture setting so you can brighten up those colors you know, enrich the saturation and darken the blacks and stuff like that. But if you're gonna be gaming on the GB500, I do need to let you know you will be losing out on a couple of things such as VRR and 4K 120. These are things I really didn't experience until I got the TV on the on the back side of that screen right there. That, that's that's crispy, Now that, that's real nice. But you do have to make some sacrifices if you're gonna be gaming on a, any projector, especially at 120 inches. So yeah, you do lose a couple of things. One more thing I do wanna note that you will lose out when going with the GP500, whether you're gaming or not, is the lack of Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision support. So that, that's that's kind of one of those things. Like when you're watching your home theater, yeah, you do lose out on that. But when you hook up your soundbar and everything, mine still sounds really, really great. So it's just that it's missing that Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. But once again, for that price point, they are still giving you a lot of value. And I have absolutely loved watching my content over this last year with GP500, man. I recommend it, I would highly recommend this projector to anyone looking to spend just a little bit of money on a, a tabletop projector that they wanna double it up as a home theater projector, but you don't wanna break the piggy bank in half and have to remortgage your house to have a nice little setup, man. The GP500 has been really good to me this year. And like I said before, I highly recommend it to you. If it's something you've been looking into, go ahead and just throw your wallet at the screen and wait on your projector to arrive at your door. Now, now, since I got this game up, I'm going to go ahead and finish it. Y'all got to get out of here. But y'all keep being good to each other, and I'll see you when I see you.